hopefully I remember how to do this after taking a week off. I think I know what buttons to push to make the live stream work. I hope you're ready to learn a little bit about action verbs. I hope that you're excited to uh to attend this English lesson. We'll start in about 30 seconds once I've made sure that everything is working well which I think it is. I think I think I've remembered <laughs> what to do to make one of these live streams work. It looks like everything is working. We'll start in about 10 seconds. Just let me check a couple more things here. I think we're good. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about action verbs and you'll notice it says part one. I'm excited to do this lesson about some of the basic action verbs in English but if you are an intermediate or advanced learner, don't leave. I will make sure to talk about other verbs every time I talk about a basic action verb. So, if I teach the verb to walk, I'll also talk about stroll and brisk walk and other variations of that verb. So, this will be an English lesson that is for beginners but it will also have parts of it that are for intermediate or advanced learners. It's really an English lesson for everyone. If you don't know what action verbs are, they're the things we do in life. The um the things we do that you can see happening. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about action verbs part one. I'm not sure how many parts there will be but this is part one. So, welcome. Hey, before we get started, I wanna mention a few things. Number one, Thank you so much for being patient while I took a week off. Um I really enjoyed it. I did literally nothing. I had to tell myself not to do anything on YouTube for six days straight or seven days I guess. Um and that was difficult for me but I think it was good. I've come up with lots of new ideas of things I can do so I'm very happy about that. Number two, you might notice this live stream in your country might be an hour difference in start time because we have moved our clocks in Canada. Last weekend, uh Saturday night, we moved our clocks ahead. We lost an hour of time. So, I'm still trying to um get enough sleep every night. It's kind of a strange thing. So, welcome to this lesson. Let me double check the audio and uh I'll mention a few more things. Uh, and then we'll get started. I should check if the camera's focusing. Excellent. We got good camera focus. Hi to Yaroslav. Hi to Dave. Thanks for being here to moderate. Hello to Sam, Linda, Eugene in Etobicoke, Jack, Selene, James. Let me scroll back. I think I said Yaroslav right at the get go. Hi to Patana, Linda, Ong, Freddie Wolf, Key Park. Know that. A few people stopping in to say hi before they had other things to do which is totally fine. You can always watch this on replay. If you do have questions during the lesson, please use the form to ask the question uh, and please use the chat for uh, fun English conversations with each other. Um I see in the chat someone saying, hey Bob, how's it going? It's going well. Also, hello teacher, how is it going? It's going well. It's a nice day. It's a little dark outside because the time has changed here in Canada by one hour. So, it's a little bit strange to be doing a live lesson when it's dark outside. But I think I've talked enough. I think we should get this lesson started. So, let's go. Uh, let's learn a little bit about action verbs. So, the first verb I want to teach is the verb cook. When you're hungry, you need to cook food. I mean, you can eat food that's already cooked. You can eat food that doesn't need to be cooked but most of the tasty meals that I enjoy eating, um I need to cook them before I eat them. Uh if I want to have some pizza, I need to cook the pizza. You can't just eat the pizza after you make it. It needs to go in the oven. You need to cook it. I do know there's a few uh other verbs for cook. You can bake things as well. Generally, we use the verb to bake to talk about breads and cookies. You can also roast things um and a variety of verbs but the basic verb if you want to talk about preparing food is the verb cook. It's it's fun to cook. You can smell things when they're cooking and it makes you hungry. 
and then of course after you cook something you will eat it. When you have food in front of you after you have sat down at the table and everyone has said hi to each other you can start to eat. There's no other way to describe this. When you eat you put food in your mouth. You then chew the food and then you swallow the food. So, in order you cook the food then you eat the food then you chew the food and then you swallow the food. That is what you do when you are hungry. We also when we talk about cook can use the word prepare. You can prepare food and when we talk about eating we can use the verb consume. You can also consume food. It's a little more formal to use the word consume. We usually use this when we are talking about eating in general. People consume a lot of fast food in North America. Catch. So, you might not think anything is happening but oh, look. This person is going to catch the keys. It looks like they got into their car and they didn't have the keys. So, someone threw the keys to them and they were able to catch them. If you have good coordination, you are probably good at catching things. Coordination is when you can see something and move your hands in a way to catch it or to touch it. So, when you are um like this person in a car and when you don't have your keys, it's nice if someone throws them to you so that you can catch them. This is a common verb when you're talking about sports. When someone passes you the basketball, you catch it. When someone throws the baseball to you, you catch it. We also sometimes say to receive in some sports. You receive a pass or you catch it. And of course, in order to catch something, someone has to throw it. Usually, someone has to throw it. So, you can see this person is um, having fun. They are throwing rocks into the water. I think they're rocks. So, when you throw, you take your arm with something in it and you move it quickly forward and then you let go. In English, we have an informal verb for throw as well. Sometimes, we just say chuck. You can chuck something and it means the same thing. When you chuck something, it means that you are throwing it. If someone throws something at you and you're not ready though, you might have to duck so that it doesn't hit you. So, there's not a whole lot going on in this little video clip because this person has decided to sleep. We are awake during the day which is the opposite of sleep but at night we sometimes have to sleep for a long period of time or sometimes for a short period of time. I myself usually need to sleep for about eight and a half hours. If I sleep for less than eight hours, I'm usually a little bit tired the next day. So, when you sleep, it restores your energy. You close your eyes and you lay in bed. You put your head on the pillow and you sleep. So, sleep is a wonderful thing. I love to sleep. I also like to nap. A nap or to nap, it can be a noun or a verb, means to sleep during the day. When I have a nap or when I nap, I usually do it sitting on that gray couch. <laughs> I don't like to nap when it, by laying down because I sleep for too long. Sometimes, I just like to have a little 10 minute nap. Sometimes we call it a snooze, a 10 minute snooze. So, there are four things that you need to do in order to learn English. One is that you need to read. When you read, you get a book or a magazine or you look at a computer screen uh, and you have words and you look at the words and somehow your brain takes that information and makes sense out of it. I love to read. In particular, I love to read science fiction books. I love to read the news. I like to read in order to learn new things. So, anytime you are looking at words, you are usually reading. And of course, the opposite, I guess, of read is write. When you write, you get a pen and paper and you put words onto the paper. Interestingly enough, when you type on a computer, you are also um, writing. You are using the same verb. I'm going to write an email to my mom later today. 
Um it was nice that you were able to write me a nice letter. Um that can be on the computer or on paper. But of course, read is when you look at words and gain understanding and when you write, it means you put your thoughts onto a piece of paper or on the screen in words. And then listen, of course. It was hard to find a clip showing someone listening but this is a pretty common thing to do when you can't hear someone or you can't hear something. Sometimes when I'm watching the TV in my back room, the volume isn't loud enough during certain parts of the movie. So, sometimes I go like this so that I can hear it. Notice the difference between listen and hear though. You decide to listen. I can decide to listen to some music. I can listen to Jen when she talks. But when you hear, it's something that happens to you. If there's a noise outside, I will hear it. And then, of course, speak. Um, it's what I'm doing right now. It's when you use your brain and your mouth and your vocal cords to make sounds. It's the number one thing that people learning English want to learn to do well. You all want to learn to speak English really, really well. You obviously want to learn to read and write and understand when you listen to English but I think the one thing that people really, really want to get good at is they want to be able to speak English um as best as they can. So, I hope that as you continue to study this uh, language, you learn to speak English really, really well. Hey, I need a sip of water and then we're gonna do some uh, questions here. Let me just have a sip. And I did see someone in the chat say, the audio sounded a bit funny but then Dave said it sounded normal. Yes, it does sound normal for me as well. Ooh, I better make sure I keep moving along. By the way, I don't have to go to work today. So, hopefully, we get through this lesson. Let me find the first question here. Um let's see here. So, Curtis says, my beloved uncle Bob, Ola. Can you tell us some mental action verb references? To meditate is an action verb. Thanks for your being or thanks thanks for being you. Um yes, to meditate would be. Now, I'm going to do more lessons on action verbs because I can do the video clips now but if you're asking how to remember them, it's always best to do the action while you say the word or write the word and then do the action. If you physically throw something and say the word throw or say I am throwing something, it will help you remember it. Let's see here. Ong says, let me know how to describe looking at something at a higher place. Is it possible to look up at something? Thanks a lot. Yes. So, if Jen was at the top of the stairs, I would look up at her and say, hey, can you um let me know if the heat's working upstairs. I would look up at her. So, definitely, you can look up at someone. You can look down at someone. Both are entirely accurate. Harry 300 is here. Says, I am late. Vitor says, the chat is pretty calm today. <laughs> yeah, it because Mode's not here. When Mode's here, the chat's pretty uh pretty lively. Uh hi to Island Resort and Vitor as well. Good to see you guys. Uh let's See, next question. Mr. Azaz. Hi, Bob. What's the difference between to have dinner and to eat dinner? Thanks. So, we are going to eat dinner at six o'clock tonight. We are going to have dinner at six o'clock tonight. Both are exactly the same. We in English use the verbs to have and to get for a lot of things. You know, I I could say I'm going to buy pizza. I can also say I'm going to get pizza. I could say we're going to have dinner in half an hour or I could say we're going to uh eat dinner in half an hour or I could say we're going to get pizza because we were we're going to have pizza tonight for dinner. Bob's Ukrainian student. Good to see you. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Glad you had some time off from YouTube. What is your most usable action verb? What do you do the most often? So, we don't really use it as an action verb but I think it's the verb to go. I mean, we do use it as an action verb but we also use it to talk about the future. 
I'm going to eat pizza tonight. Notice I'm talking about pizza. I made dough yesterday and it's in the fridge. Um I'm going to eat pizza. I'm going to um sell a wagon later this spring. I'm going to have a nap later today. So, we definitely use the verb to go but not really as an action verb, right? We're just using it to talk about the future a little bit. Um but I would say run. Like, I'm gonna run to the store. I'm just gonna run home for a minute and grab something. Even though run means to physically run, we use it to talk about going somewhere as well. So, Linda. Hi, dear Bob. If I have crumbs on, little fix there, crumbs on my tablecloth, can I say I go outside and shake the tablecloth to get rid of the crumbs? Is it correct to use shake as a verb? Thanks. Yes. So, if I had a tablecloth and if it had crumbs and other little um pieces of food from being done eating, I would go outside and I would actually use the verb to shake out. I would shake it out, okay? When you shake it out, it means you could just say shake it but shake it out actually conveys the meaning a little bit better. I would go outside and shake it out. We ha- we do that with the little rug in our entrance way. We go outside and we shake it out every week to clean it up a little bit. Orman, hello, mister Bob. Do you know someone who has fear of sleep? I do not know anyone that fears sleep. I love sleep. I am not afraid of sleep at all. <laughs> not at all. I I love sleep. Uh let me see here. I'm just gonna do a little audio check and then I am going to get back to the lesson. Everything sounds great. Let's see here. Hey, if you're one of the 283 people watching, don't forget to subscribe um and you will get notified when I do a new lesson. Let's get back to the lesson though. I do need to keep moving along. We're doing okay but this next bit, I might go a little faster. We'll see. Oops, I'm clicking the wrong buttons now. Here we go. So, one of the most common verbs. Now, I just said run was more common but walk is very common. You walk everywhere. Part of the thing that makes us human is that we are able to walk. If I want to go to the barn, I can walk to the barn. If I want to go uh from one classroom to another, I can walk. And as I mentioned, we do use other words to talk about walking. A stroll is a very slow walk. If I go for a stroll, or if I say he was strolling along. It means someone is walking very, very slowly. You can also go for a brisk walk. Um that means that you are walking very, very quickly. Uh and you can also tiptoe when you walk to go quietly. There are many, many different ways to walk. Run. So, when you run, it's kind of like walking but you go a lot faster. Um when you run, your feet come off the ground. I think when you walk, your feet stay on the ground. So, you can see this person has decided they need to get somewhere quickly. So, they are going to run. So, you can see that they are running. Now, there are different words for run. You can go for a jog. You can jog down the road which is similar to what this person is doing. You can also sprint. When you sprint, it means you run very, very fast. So, this person I would say is just going for a nice run. Uh they are running. So, if you are here and you want to go up, you need to climb. You either need to climb the stairs or you need to climb a ladder. You need to get somewhere higher and we use the verb climb to talk about that. You can see this person is probably working on something in their house and they needed to climb the ladder to get up to a higher spot. The um other thing that can happen when you are somewhere high is you can fall. Don't worry. I'm sure this person is okay but this person decided to climb a ladder but something wasn't safe and they lost their balance and so now they are falling. It's not nice to fall. I'm sure he landed on something very, very soft when he fell. 
So there's a nice picture of the person. I shouldn't laugh. I'm not sure why I'm laughing. Um but I'm sure that this person is okay. I'm sure that um they weren't sh- aware that they were going to fall but then they did fall and hopefully they are okay. One of the nicest things to do during the day is to laugh. I really like it when I hear people laugh. I like it when I laugh. I like to hear laughter. Um when people laugh it just makes the day nicer. I like to tell little jokes when I'm teaching because I like to make people laugh. And there's a couple different verbs. You can make someone giggle. So, a laugh is like ha 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 and a giggle is like <laughs> that sorry that was really I guess it is how my giggle works. So, a giggle is kind of a small laugh but it is always nice to hear people laugh or to hear people giggle when you go through your day. It just makes your day nicer. When you see people smile, uh when you see people laugh, when you see people giggling, it makes you happy yourself. So, this is something that you are all doing right now. You have decided to learn. You've decided that you want to learn English. One of the ways you learn English is you watch YouTube videos or you come to my live lesson. Um when you learn something, it means first of all that you don't know it and you do things so that you will know it. Maybe you read something. Maybe you listen to someone explain something but you've decided that you want to know something and so in order to learn it, you need to do the action of learning in order to know it. Um this is one of my favorite things to do by the way. I really really like learning. I like to learn. I like this little clip here. I feel like this person has a lot of freedom. Uh they have decided to ride a motorcycle. When you have a motorcycle or if you have a horse, you would ride your motorcycle. You would ride your horse. If you have a bicycle, you ride your bicycle. Generally in English, If you sit on something, we use the verb to ride to talk about it. He is um probably going to ride his motorcycle for a long time. You can see he has his leather jacket. What I don't like though is he is not wearing his helmet. He should be wearing his helmet. In Canada, you must wear a helmet. I think there are some states in the United States where you don't have to wear a helmet but in Canada, you are required to wear a helmet. Now, if you are in a car or a truck or van, you will drive that vehicle. Um usually when you sit in something, you use the verb drive. I drive my tractor. I drive my car. I drive my minivan. If I want to have pizza tonight, I might have to drive to the store to buy some of the ingredients. So, Drive is any time you are uh, moving in a vehicle and controlling it with the steering wheel. By the way, here's a I hope this doesn't confuse you but you can ride in a car if you're not the driver. If I drive a car, I'm the driver but if I go in the car, then I ride in the car. Interesting, isn't it? A little just a little bit of a distance uh difference there. Not distance, difference. Hey, as humans, we can walk but sometimes we get tired and we want to sit down. You can also use the verb sit like I'm going to sit on this chair but we often use the verb sit down uh to talk about when someone goes from standing to a sitting position. So, I might use it as a command. I might say to my students, sit down. The lesson is going to start. Or I might say, hey, I would like everyone to sit down. I want to start teaching the lesson. Some of you are probably standing right now. Um if you're getting tired, you can sit down. You can go from a standing position to a sitting position. This is this is my action, me acting it out. I guess this this person acts it out a little better. He's standing and now he has decided to sit down. Now, of course, the opposite would be to stand up. You can just use the verb stand. That does work but we do often say stand up. Um I would like everyone to stand up. 
I would like everyone to sit down. Stand up if you have a question. Um so, it's one little tiny extra word, the word up but it does indicate that someone is moving from a sitting position to a standing position. They have decided to stand up. So, in English, we use the verb to fight to talk about two different things. When you argue with someone like these two people are doing, we would use the verb fight. You know, I had a fight with my friend today. That doesn't mean that you and your friend were hitting each other. It can mean that. So, you have to be careful with the verb fight. If I say, oh, uh, my friend and I got in a fight yesterday. It means we had an argument. It means we disagreed with each other and we only used words. If I said there was a fight at school, two students were fighting or I think those two students are angry and they're going to fight. Then I mean that they're going to hit or punch each other. So, fight I think I've explained this before has two meanings and you really need to listen to what the person is saying to understand them. If I said to you I got in a fight with my boss yesterday, um that would mean we argued. So, sometimes things make us sad and one of the actions that happens is we cry. When you cry, tears come out of your eyes and tears roll down your cheeks. You can see this older lady here is very very sad. The younger lady is trying to comfort her to make her feel better but the older lady um something has happened that has made her cry. So, she is very sad. I don't actually see tears on her cheeks but I couldn't find a video clip of someone with actual tears rolling down their cheeks. But when you're sad, when something happens to you that makes you sad, you sometimes will cry. One thing kids do a lot is they play. One thing adults don't do enough is they don't play enough. They don't take time to enjoy life and to do fun things. This uh little boy has a kite and he has decided to go outside and play. He's decided to enjoy his time outdoors. Kids will often play with toys. When kids get a new toy on their birthday, sometimes instead of um enjoying the party, they want to play with their toy because it's a new toy. Uh in Canada, we give gifts at Christmas and kids often want to play with their toys their new toys as soon as possible. So, when you play, it means you usually you're a kid and you do something fun. You can play with toy cars. You can play with a kite. You can also as an adult, you can play games with other people. So, you can play sports as well. Like I when I was younger, uh I like to play soccer. I like to play baseball. So, it can also be used when talking about a sport. This is one another one of my favorite things to do. I like to think. In fact, I really liked this video clip because this is exactly how I think. I usually have a pen or pencil in my hand and I fidget a little bit. Fidget is a word like if you twirl a pen in your hand and you you kind of do little things like this. It's called fidgeting. So, I usually fidget with a pen. Sometimes, I do tap my head and I do that because that's how I think. When I want to think of a new lesson or a new way of teaching English on YouTube, I usually sit like this gentleman and I think. When you think you're having thoughts in your mind, no one else can see them. Um but yes, you think for a bit and then hopefully you come up with new ideas. Hey, I have a couple verbs here to turn on and then of course, to turn off the opposites. Let's go back to this one. If a light is off, when you push the upper button or when you flip the switch up, you turn on the light. Uh so, if it's dark in a room, you might want to turn on the light. We also use this to talk about things. You can turn on your computer. You can turn on the TV. Um I can uh also um turn 
on my camera which is right here. Sorry, a little bit of a a lapse in my thinking there. I'm trying not to think about too many things at once and I'm thinking about too many things at once. Uh you can also use a switch to turn off. So, when you flip a switch, you can turn off a light. You can turn off your TV. You can I can turn off this light. Whoa, that's really dark, isn't it? I shouldn't do that during a lesson. I I shouldn't turn off the light during a lesson. I should turn the light back on. There we go. It's gonna be a little bright while my camera adjusts a bit there. There we go. Back to normal. So, you can turn something on. You can also turn something off. And then another pair here. You can open something and you can also close something. That went a little quickly there. Let's go back. You can open a door. You can open a box. You can open a can of food. Uh anytime something is inside something else or when you want to go into something, you might need to open the box or open the door. I'm not sure I'm doing a good job of explaining this one. This person is going to turn the door handle and open the door. After they have opened the door, they can go through the doorway and then they could close the door. So, once again, close is the opposite of open. Hey, I think it's time to do members only chat. I did see a few questions from people in the chat asking about the time of the lesson. So, the reason this lesson is early is because um of daylight savings time. So, in Canada, in the spring, we move our clocks ahead one hour and in the fall, we move our clocks back one hour. And this means that for me, this is the normal time to do a live stream but for some of you, the time has changed by an hour. So, I'm sorry. That's just how the world works. So, this is the time of day that I will be doing this live lesson for the next few months at least until summer comes uh and then I will possibly change the time again. Anyways, it's members only chat time. Um members only chat time is a time when members can ask questions directly in the chat. It's one of the perks of being a member. When you join, when you click the join button and you agree to be a member, you get an extra video on Wednesdays a little lesson plan on Mondays and you get to have your name in green in the chat and you get to ask questions directly in the chat during members only chat time. Anyways, I'm gonna answer one or two questions from here and then I'll start on members uh questions from the chat. Lan says, hello, Bob. I'm new here. Well, welcome. Your videos are very helpful. Thank you. I want to know why you call yourself Bob the Canadian instead of the Canadian Bob. I think because I like the way it sounds. Um we do use this phrase in English. Let's say there were two Bobs and one Bob was American and one Bob was Canadian. If someone was talking about Bob, another person could say, wait, are you talking about Bob the Canadian or Bob the American? So, it is a legitimate way of indicating where someone's from. Are you talking about um Bob the Canadian or are you talking about Bob the Australian? So, I just like the way it sounds, Bob the Canadian. So, learn English with Bob the Canadian. If you've ever noticed the titles on my videos and the words I use to describe things are often boring but they're exactly they have the exact meaning I'm trying to convey. What is this channel about? You will learn English with Bob the Canadian. Um the last video I did I think was called oh, I can't remember the name but 12 collocations um that you need to know and then I taught them. So, I'm not very creative sometimes. Uh let's see here. James says, hello, Bob. Glad to join your live streaming today. I'm wondering if you took great week off during last week. Yes, I had a great week off. Blue t-shirt looks good on you. It's got a vibe. Thank you. It's my relaxing t-shirt. Okay, from the chat. Linda says, nice t-shirts, Bob. That means spring has arrived. Have a good day. Yes, it's six degrees outside right now. Um and it's supposed to be seven or eight degrees Celsius today. That's nice and warm. I know that might sound cold for some of you. 
Vitor, it's good to listen again to well, hello and welcome to this English lesson, Bob. It's good to have you back. Explaining with GIFs is pretty cool. It makes your lessons more vivid. Yes, I always wanted to be able to explain action type vocabulary with actual video action. So, I'm happy that I can do it. Yaroslav, I miss your lessons, teacher Bob. How are things going out on your farm? Some action verbs from the countryside. Plant, dig, prune, cut. Sorry if someone doesn't like it. Yes, things are going well, Yaroslav, on the farm. Jen has been starting a lot of seeds in the basement and we have just started to put them outside. They're in trays. We aren't planting in the ground yet. Things are still in pots and trays but certainly the next four weeks we'll see a change from winter to spring here and we will start doing a lot more. Key Park, please talk about the word grab. Likely, it's used to describe different actions, right? Yes. This is a pretty common verb in English. Like, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna grab a drink. I'm hungry. I'm gonna grab some pizza. Do you wanna grab lunch today? Um or just you know, you can grab something when you when you do like I'm gonna grab my cup and have a drink right now. Good. That's a good verb to mention. I should have put it in the list. Freddie Wolf. Hey, Bob the champion. Uh I thought that the verb think is categorized as a non-action verb as my thoughts wrong. You probably right. So, there's not a lot indicating that you are thinking, right? Like the video clip I showed you, you could tell the person was thinking but they could have also been learning, right? Um so, that's a good one. I think I think it's both. I think it depends on what you do when you are thinking. Yaroslav, wow, sounds great. Similar work is waiting for me as well. Yes, I it's actually a little it has been a little colder than normal recently. Usually, during spring break, we do a lot of farm work. Oh, I think Freddie, not the hurricane. <laughs> That's the same question here. Bob, some word verbs can either be active and non-active. Oh, wait. Some verbs can be either active and non-active like see here. Would you mind explaining a little bit about them? Thank you. De plus. Is it de plus or de plus? De plus, comment on dit un fou rire? Merci. A crazy laugh. We would say a crazy laugh um or an evil laugh but that's a little stronger. Yeah, like some are, right? Like because when you hear something, you can't visibly see that it's happening. When you if you were to describe someone seeing something, you can't actually tell. It's different than running, definitely. When someone runs, you can tell that they're running. Ah, uh, let's see here. Marwanto. Hi, Marwanto. Hi, Bob. Nice to meet you and earlier than another day. Yes, it's a little earlier because of time change but this will for the 371 people watching and I feel bad because some people might be missing the lesson because they didn't realize the time change. This will be the normal time for a while. Uh let's see. Linda, the chat is really too calm today. Where is mode to spice it up a little bit? I think there are a few people missing because of the time change. That could be. Harry 300. Bob, we use ride for a horse bike. We use drive for a car. How about a plane, train or ship? So, usually you take a plane. You go on a plane. I'm going to take a plane to get to France. You go in a plane as well by the way. So, I'm gonna confuse you a little bit here. Um you go by train or by ship. How are you getting there? I'm gonna go by plane, by train, by ship and you do go on a ship and then you go in a plane. What do you do with a train? You go on a train. Yeah, let me research this a bit. I don't travel using those methods of travel but I would say the simplest way to think about it is to use the word by. I'm going to go by car, by train, by plane or by boat uh but definitely you go in a car and you drive a car. You go in a plane too. Yes, I'm gonna go in the plane and I'm gonna go by plane. I don't wanna get too confused here but uh certainly not an easy topic for English learners. Uh from the chat, Yaroslav says, I started translating some books recently. A book recently. I realized I don't know English so well. Yes, it probably depends on the book you chose as well, right? Some books are a little harder than others. K 
Okay, question from Aziz. The difference between sit down and settle down. So, if all my students at the beginning of class are running around and throwing stuff, I might say everyone sit down. That means that I want them to sit in their desks. But if I just want them to stop acting the way they're acting, I could say everyone settle down. That means I want them to stop doing what they're doing. It doesn't necessarily mean they need to sit in their desk um but definitely um I do often say this. Everyone please settle down. We're going to start class in a minute. Please settle down. Find your desk and sit down. So, one means to stop the current behavior. The other one means to take a seat. Harry 300. Bob, can we use turn on for turning on a bike car and also the opposite one turn off? So, I generally start my car and then I turn off my car. So, I put my key in and I start my car and then I then I put it in drive and I start driving. So, I use the verb but to actually turn the key, I would use start. Like the other day, my son's car wouldn't start and he needed a new battery um but yeah. So, I'm going to start my van, I'm going to turn off my van. So, weird that we use different ones there. Um let's see here. So, for a bike, if you had an e-bike, you would turn on your e-bike probably. Yes. But yeah, definitely when you turn the key in a car, you start the car. Wanda, hi teacher Bob. The time changed. What a pity. Hi everyone. Yes, the time did change. Sorry about that. We are voting in Canada at some point whether to keep this or not. Linda says, stop horsing around. Yes, settle down and stop horsing around would mean the same thing. Uh what's the difference between convenient and comfortable? This chair is very comfortable. There is a store close to me and that's very convenient. So, one means that something is nice like this shirt's comfortable. This chair is comfortable but the store is convenient because I only have to drive five minutes to get there. It's easy to get to. Let's see here. So, Shota Blue, hello, Bob. Could you tell me the difference between to watch and to see? Like, what would you imagine I'm actually doing when I say I'm watching WC games? So, I would say if someone said I'm watching the basketball game tonight, I would think they're watching it on a television. If someone says, I'm going to see a game tonight, I would imagine they're going to the stadium in person. Okay? And we do use these verbs interchangeably sometimes. Like, uh, last night, I watched the Raptors. That means I was watching it on uh, my television. If I said, last night, I saw the Raptors game, it means I went to the stadium to watch it or to the um where do they play basketball? They play hockey in an arena. Um the sports complex, let's say that. Um let me see here. I need to get back to the lesson. That's what it says. Let me check something for a moment. Where are we at? We're doing great. We have plenty of time to finish this lesson off. Well, uh let me get Let's see here. I need to turn off members only chat. Let me do that and let me think the members as I do that and have a drink of water. Thank you for being members, all of you. Freddie Wolf says, what is the difference between start and begin? So, that those are a little closer. Like, when I start my walk, I I start my watch. When I begin my walk, I start my like my um my stopwatch. I start my stopwatch. So, when I start a new job, I like to make sure everyone, I I wear nice clothes when I start a new job. When I begin a new job, I'll have to think about that one, Freddie. They are very, very similar. James, thank you very much for gifting a membership and it looks like Michael was gifted a membership by James. James, you're awesome. Thank you for doing that. That is very, very cool and then backing up, Nurali, Nurula has become a member. Thank you so much for joining and becoming a member. That's awesome. But again, thanks, James. That's very, very cool. Um I think we should finish off the lesson. Let me get to my slides here. We just finished close. Forgetting how things work. Leave. So, when someone goes away, 
If someone visits you, eventually they will leave. If someone comes over for tea, you'll have tea, you'll talk and then at a certain point, they will leave. They might even say, I have to leave now. I have to leave at four o'clock. I often use this verb when I'm talking about going to work. I'll say and I don't have to say this today. I'll say, I need to finish the lesson soon because I need to leave for work. That means I have to physically get up, put on my coat and drive to the school. So, if you are in one place and you decide to go to another place, you will leave the place you're in. Don't get confused with go and leave. We do use them interchangeably. I have to leave for work in an hour. I have to go to work in an hour. A slight difference in usage but it definitely means to go from one location to a different location. This is gonna freak you out. I don't know if you know the verb freak out. It's like when something scares you a bit but this person is going to look at you. Wait for it. It's going to happen. He is currently oh there it is. Like that is someone is definitely looking at you. When I look over there it feels like I'm not talking to you but when I look at the camera, we make eye contact and it feels like I'm talking to you. Um so, yes, I I thought this clip was good because you can see this man look in one direction and then eventually he will look at you. So, when you use your eyes um and you point your eyes, I guess, at someone. It's a kind of a weird way to describe it. We would use the verb look. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to look outside. I'm going to look uh in the kitchen because I lost my keys. I'm going to look in the kitchen. I guess that means to search for too, right? So, it has two meanings. Like, I can look at you. I can also look for something if I add the verb for. This guy looks relatively into his video game and suddenly, he will lose. So, he's playing something. You have the ability to win when you play something but you also can lose. It's not fun to lose. When two teams play a sport, eventually one team will win and one team will lose. When you lose, you're usually sad. Um you usually go home a little bit sad or upset uh, or disappointed because it's not fun to lose. It's much more fun to win. When you play a game with someone, maybe you play checkers or chess. When you win, you are very, very happy. We also use it to talk about when things go well at work. You could say something like, today we had a win at work. We sold a lot of things to another company. So, it's not used as a verb but it's used as a noun. Sorry to get a bit confusing there. Let's go back to games. You can lose a game or you can win a game. When you win, you're happy. When you lose, you are sad. And sometimes you meet people. So, maybe you go and you meet someone somewhere. You might say, let's meet today at four o'clock for coffee. I can meet you at noon and we can talk about the new project. Can you meet me in three days at the school and we'll make some lessons? So, when you meet, it's when you go to the same place as another person. Um it can also mean um I'm gonna use the word meet again but when you meet someone for the first time, we use the word meet as well. So, I'm going to meet you at school or I would like you to meet my new friend. That means you are seeing them for the first time. To give, I really like this clip. So, two things happen here. One, the man gives flowers to the woman and then the woman is happy and she gives the man a kiss. Actually, they give each other a kiss. So, certainly, this is a happy situation. The person has decided to buy flowers and then he has decided to give them to the woman. So, when you give something, you have it and then after you do this, then the other person has it. You understand what I'm saying. Like, when you give something, you have it. After you give it, the other person has it. Maybe that's a good way to describe it. So, you can give things like flowers. 
uh, I can also give an English lesson. So, I'm giving an English lesson right now. The action of teaching it, we can use give as well. So, always nice to give things to people. This guy is really excited. He's running and now he's going to jump. When you jump, both feet come off the ground. It's not something I do very often. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to jump but when you jump, uh you kind of crouch down and then you use all your leg muscles and your arm muscles to go into the air. It's a little bit like flying. It's like flying but for like half a second. So, often people will jump when they play a sport. People will also jump when they're excited. Um people will always always enjoy running and jumping as long as they're young enough to still do it. As I said, I don't often jump but uh, sometimes I do. So, hey, that was a lesson on action verbs. Thank you so much for watching. Um do remember that this is part one. I won't necessarily do part two next week but I do have a few lessons planned where I'm going to use video clips to help you see the meaning of the words. Thank you for watching. I am going to answer a few more questions so you don't need to leave. Um let me see if there are some questions. Yep, couple questions left. If you have a question you want to ask directly in the chat, you could do that as well. I'm actually kind of surprised um that I'm done. I think I went faster than normal for the second part. So, let's look at some questions. Here we go. This is one that I will not be able to answer quickly. Fabian. Hi, teacher Bob. Thank you for this spectacular lesson. I have a question. What is the difference between make and do? Greetings from Columbia. So, I'm just going to say this. In its basic form, make means that you produce something. Whereas, do means that you participate in something. They do get overlapped a bit but look at look at it this way. I can make a toy for one of my kids. I can make a toy by getting pieces of wood and gluing them together. I can make a toy. So, there was nothing and then when I use the word make, it means I've made something. I've produced something. Do is usually something where it's an action. I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to do it later today um but it does get a little confusing and I I promise someday I will make a longer lesson on make and do because they are very very tricky to get right. So, hey, that is the end. I'm out of questions. I have taught the lesson. Let me tell you a few things you need to know though. Um I wonder if I forgot to turn this. Oh, yeah, look at that. Every once in a while, I forget to uh there's a sp- never mind. I'll exp- I don't need to explain. Um this lesson will come out in a shorter version in a couple days. You should watch that. It usually has better subtitles um and you can watch little parts that maybe you didn't understand and I do remove all of the questions. So, it's a shorter lesson. It's usually 20 or 25 minutes long. I am back at doing YouTube. There's a new video on my short channel, Bob's Short English Lessons. Uh, you can watch that today uh, and I will be putting a new video out on Tuesday. It's almost ready to go. Uh, it's in the editing phase right now um, but yes, I had a week off. Thank you for giving me a week off. I appreciated it um, and, but I'm back and so things will be back to normal. Remember, this Friday lesson will be at this time. I apologize if you're watching this on replay because you missed it but yes, time changed in Canada so it's actually the same time for me just not the same time for some of you. Um anyways, thanks for watching. Um by the way, if you ever want to thank me, this is going to sound strange. One of the best ways to thank me is to just watch my videos. The more you watch my videos, the more you learn and the more it helps my channel grow. It's a win-win we would say in English. So, if you're thinking, oh, I want to thank Bob somehow, just watch a few videos from start to end. That's that's thanks enough. Anyways, let me say bye to a few people. Uh bye to John Wedge who just arrived. Sorry, John. We started for me at the same time but maybe for you not because of daylight savings time. Um Vitor is saying bye. Say uh, bye Vitor. Bye John. Bye Ulia. Uh bye Yaroslav. Bye May. Kamo. Bye James. Uh 
bye to Dave. Thanks for moderating again. That's awesome. Uh, bye to Key Park, Sophia, Naomi T, Linda, Freddie Wolf. Um, Freddie Wolf says, let me wish you a great work day and a great weekend as well. Yes, I will have a nice work day because I don't have to go to work today. <laughs> but I wish all of you a good day at work if you're there or still have to go. James says, win-win. Yes, that's a great English term. When two people benefit from something, we say it's a win-win. So, if you watch a video, you learn English, that's a win for you. I see an extra view and maybe you watch the ad and I make a couple cents uh pennies. So, it's a win for me. It's a win-win. Let's see. Yaroslav says, bye everyone. Have a fun weekend. You too. Wanda, bye teacher Bob. Zeev says, bye Bob. Eugene from Etobicoke says, bye. Eugene, enjoy your time at the home show and did you say you're going to a sports show or an athletic show tomorrow? That'd be cool as well. Toronto has a lot of shows in the winter. Boat shows and home shows and plant shows, all that kind of stuff. John Wedge says, have a nice weekend. You too. Uh, Key Park says, win-win. It's always a win-win when you watch Bob the Canadian. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. I'm gonna say bye and hit the end button. This was fun. Uh Tuesday, new video. Uh next Friday, another lesson. Should be good. Bye.